Good morning. So this morning, let's learn how to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, let's have some theorems on parallelogram. So let's have each diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So let's have this parallelogram A, B, C, and D. So let's say this is the diagonal. So we have here the first triangle A, B, D is congruent to our second triangle b c d okay if the diagonal is a c so we also have two triangles so we have here triangle a b c it's also congruent to triangle a c d okay the second theorem that we have opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent so let's say this is the parallelogram A, B, C, and D. And these are the opposite sides. So if you could see the symbol, meaning to say these parts are congruent and taking consideration that they have the same tick marks. So we could have here A, B is congruent to C, D. We also have here the opposite sides. We have A, D is congruent to B, C. Okay, number three. Opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So if this is your parallelogram, the opposite angles are angle A is congruent to angle C. We also have angle B is congruent to angle D. Okay, number four. Any two consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. So when we say supplementary, meaning to say the sum of that is 180 degrees. So if this is your parallelogram, the two consecutive angles, there we have angle A plus the measure of angle B, that is 180 degrees. Another two consecutive angles, we have the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, that is also 180. The third consecutive angles that we could see here is the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle T, that is also 180. And the last two consecutive angles, we have the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D, that is also 180 degrees. Okay, the fifth theorem that we have, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So if this is the diagonals of your parallelogram and they intersect at point O, so meaning to say they bisect each other. So we could have here OA is congruent to OC. So we also have here OD is congruent to OB. Okay. The next theorem that we have, we have a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if two sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay. So we have here. So these symbols here tells us that the sides are parallel and congruent. So therefore, we could say so we have your AB is congruent to side CD. At the same time, they are also parallel. So AB is parallel to CD. So another sides that we have parallel and congruent. So we have side AD is congruent to side BC. At the same time, side AD is also parallel to side BC. Okay, now let's solve for the missing variable. So we have here a parallelogram A, B, C, and D. So a theorem that could apply here, we have the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So therefore, we could say 4x is equal to 5x minus 4. Now let's solve for the value of x. So we have 4x minus 5x is equal to negative 4. So 4x minus 5x, that gives us negative x, is equal to negative 4. Divide everything by negative 1. So x now is equal to 4. Now we are going to substitute these two of the value of our 4x. So we have here 4x is equal to 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 is equal to 16. Now, let's check the other side if it is also 16 since they bisect each other. So, therefore, they should be equal. So, we have 5x minus 4 is equal to 5 times 4 minus 4. So, 5 times 4, it's 20 minus 4. 
that is also 16. Okay, second example. So we have here, so a particular theorem that could apply here is that opposite sides of parallelogram are congruent. So therefore, we could have PS is congruent to QR. So PS there is 2x plus 3 and QR is 5x minus 12. We simply substitute. Now let's solve for the value of x. So we have 2x minus 5x is equal to negative 12 minus 3. 2x minus 5x that is negative 3x is equal to negative 15. Divide everything by negative 3. x is equal to 5. So we substitute if it is really equal. So we have there 2x plus 3 is equal to 2 times 5 plus 3. That's 10 plus 3. That is 13. Okay, so meaning to say QR there should also be 13. So let's check. So 5x minus 12 is equal to 5 times 5 minus 12. 25 minus 12. That is also 13. Okay, number 3. So what could be the value of the x and the y here? So a theorem that could apply here, consecutive angles of parallelogram are supplementary. So we could have here the measure of angle P plus the measure of angle O is equal to 180. So the measure of angle P is 3y plus 9. So we substitute angle O is 120 is equal to 180. So 3y here is equal to 180 minus 9 minus 120. So 3y is equal to 51. Divide everything by 3. y is equal to 17. So we substitute. So 3 times 17 plus 9. So 3 times 17, that is 51 plus 9. So that is 60. So therefore, the measure of angle P is 60 degrees. Now let's solve for the value of x and the measurement of angle M. So we have here, opposite angles are congruent. So therefore, we could have here, the measure of angle M is congruent to the measure of angle O. Angle M here is 2x plus 4 is equal to 120. So 2x is equal to 120 minus 4. 2x is equal to 120 minus 4, that is 116, divided by 2. So x here is equal to 58. Now, if you're going to substitute there, it should be 120. So 2 times 58 plus 4, that is 116 plus 4, that is 120. So therefore, the measure of angle M is 120, which is the same to its opposite angle. So that's all for today. Thank you so much. Grade 9.